Good morning folks, JP here. We are in June of 2020. And as you can see, we have a brick wall that has bees in it. Came out the other day and uh, shot the wall with my thermal image and we'll do that today. See if we can get a reading. But uh, the reading that I got the other day was showing that uh, this thing was sizable. And right now we have bees coming out of a little hole in the mortar here and here and they're spread out up here we're going to try to get these beans out of here today and give them uh, a better home than what they're in right now not that this isn't a good home but the homeowner you know doesn't want them here okay and there's a big strip of grass here sooner or later somebody's probably going to get stung by these bees when they're cutting the grass bees don't have ears okay but they do pick up on vibrations and sooner or later the odds are there that someone either cutting the grass or working a, a weed ear will get stung by them. So anyway, that's what we got planned today. I sure hope you all enjoy the video. Alright, we got the thermal cam out folks. So we got some yellow here, see? I don't know how this is coming in, but, uh, and then it kind of stops over here. It's a, well, we still have yellow. So, yeah, hypothetically, I mean, we're going to get some heat transference because this is brick, but from here, so that's where that post, a little bit past that post to all the way to, uh, looks like about maybe here. Wow. So that's, that's a good, maybe four and a half feet. Okay. So. We'll see, folks. We'll see what we got today. All right, let's give them a little smoke here, folks. If someone asked me what type of smoke or fuel I use. About the last couple of years, I guess I've been using burlap. I've used pine needles before, and also hay. All three are very good smoke or fuels. So no, she didn't get me onto my face, as you can see, she got me on my hand. And so I'm smoking that spot to uh, mask any alarm pheromone that would cause other bees to make want to zero in on that spot. Give you a quick little bird's eye view here. Not going to lie, folks, required a lot of effort to remove this one brick. This is not an easy task. You can see all the mortar dust. We're all making progress. Not quite as fast as we would like this to go, but we're all making progress. Usually when you're removing bricks, once you've got a brick or two out, uh, it's like a domino effect, usually. And uh, things start going smoothly, but um, <laughs> this particular wall wasn't like this at all. Um, I had to painstakingly remove mortar and brick by brick. It, it was a, a real task, I'm not going to lie. The bees, were, for the most part, were pretty gentle. I just got popped there, as you can see. Actually, I don't think I was popped right there. It was just a close call. Hey, all things considered, not having to suit up. I think I might have used a veil one one time during this process, this initial process, and then uh, you know, the bees kind of calmed down and, uh, and we got it done. Nothing like a little smoke bath every now and then to remove any scent that the bees may find disagreeable. All right. Ah. Hey, folks. 
Oh, back on his job. And as you can see, we got bees, okay? In a brick wall. Uh, the other day, I opened the wall. It took over three hours to remove, I don't know, maybe 45 bricks. I never counted it. a good many bricks. And uh, exposed the hive. And we had some mortar dust, you know. That's, that's what happens when you open a plaster wall or a cinder block wall or a brick wall. You have you know, mortar dust, plaster dust. But what was nice is there's a hose not too far from here. And I was able to wet everything down, clean off the combs, and the bees were able to get back to normal. What happened when I was taking the bricks all out, they ran behind the first comb layer, and you couldn't see all these bees, all right? You could not see this. What you could see is a little row across the top right here, maybe like, maybe a foot and a half across, and maybe from the top down, you know, maybe, I don't know, four and a half inches of bees. So when I came on back this evening to take a look at this, and we saw all these bees, you know, I wasn't entirely surprised, but uh, I was a little bit surprised. I wasn't entirely surprised because I've seen a little bit of everything over the years dealing with bees. They never cease to amaze you and surprise you. So, and I always tell people, expect the unexpected, and you won't be completely blown away by what they were capable of doing. <laughs> and this is no exception, so, you know, uh, the homeowner's dad said that he thinks the bees have been here three or four weeks and the homeowner said probably more like at least a year. Going with what the homeowner said, this is definitely something that's been here a while, okay? And from here to about here is some old dark comb. And that's indi indicative of something that's been there a while, okay? New stuff on the outside of the brood nest which is, this is the brood nest. So I would say that the, this hive is pretty well organized. Okay, that's the way I look at it. You know, brood nest in the middle, honeycomb on either side of the brood nest. All right, all the real hard stuff is done. I'm sitting down on the ground. Not too often uh, I get that opportunity to sit on the ground and, and remove a beehive, you know. It seems to always be up on ladders stuff like that you know heck I've, I've rented lifts before you know where you know 67 foot lifts where I'm you know way the heck up off the ground and uh, because believe it or not because those bees were bothering somebody and uh, and they had to go so I had to rent a 67 foot lift but anyway here we are let's get right to it all right look at the amount of bees on the comb sections folks yes we're using the bee vac Believe it or not, a lot of people comment, well, why don't you use a BVAC? It would just be so much easier. Well, I actually do use a BVAC routinely, but I usually don't use the BVAC when I know I'm going to be videoing a removal so that I can give you guys commentary. So y'all don't like the sound of the BVAC. A lot of people don't like music in the parts when you would normally hear a BVAC. So I thought we'd try a little something different today and just do some voiceover. So what do you prefer? You want to hear music? You want to hear the BVAC voiceover? Hey, as always, I welcome your feedback, folks. Appreciate it. I have not hit these bees with any smoke today whatsoever. It's always a pleasure when you're dealing with bees that are pretty gentle, folks. Makes it a lot easier, especially when it's warm out. Which brings up another subject people often ask me, why don't you wear protection? So it's not that I'm a lunatic or anything crazy like that. It's just that I'm more comfortable working bees without protective equipment when it's really warm out. If bees are really aggressive, you'll see me suit up. Seems like an animal might have come by. Maybe done that. I'm not sure, but uh, I see a piece of poop on the end that looks chewed up. Maybe, maybe a raccoon came by and had a little snack. Yeah, maybe it could have been a raccoon or possum. Well, we got critters, folks. All right, how about a little close-up for you? I'm starting to see some of that dark uh, brood comb now. See, it's the amount of the bees are impressive, uh, you know, at least a couple inches thick. When I left the other day, you know, a lot of the bees, in the process of removing the bricks, they went on the uh, back side of that first layer. And uh, when I came back, it was, you know, quite a surprising sight to see the amount of bees that were present. Didn't really realize that uh, this hive had this amount of bees. Is it unusual that the bees actually ran on the back side of that first layer of comb? Not really. 
of remove beams on a cinder block walls where they actually went to the adjacent chambers which were devoid of uh, mortar dust and stuff like that. Just uh, another testament to how intelligent these little critters really are. <laughs> More than likely, we're going to feed most of this back to the bees. Yeah, you would really wouldn't want to eat this with the little pieces of mortar and stuff, you know, and the honeycomb there. So, we'll just feed this you know, back to the bees. Bees don't mind uh, a little bit of mortar dust, it's not going to bother them. So, you want to be careful that you don't vacuum too much honey, you don't want the honey coating inside the hose. I mean, it's going to happen, but you want to keep that to a bad minimum because uh, the honey inside the hose is, is hard on the bees because they're going down you know, into your catch box. So you want to keep that to a bare minimum, if at all possible. You know, you might be looking at this wall and, and noticing that the wire packet that my hand's on right now, that is uh, wiring for electrical sockets that are on the back side of the brick wall. And you might be thinking, well, it's kind of weird that the bees encapsulated the wire but it's actually not unusual at all I've removed countless hives that had wires and pipes hoses you name it I even had one that was underneath the porch it was kind of an open air colony they encapsulated eight inches of a lawnmower handle in the hive and so to remove that hive I had to cut the lawnmower handle out of the, the comb <laughs> That was the first thing I had to do to re remove the hive so they don't really care what's in the void space they'll just you know build around and encapsulate whatever's in there. Yeah, they just, they really just don't care, so they just, they just go for it. Do what needs to be done. So here I'm applying a heavy dose of smoke. Sometimes it's just faster to get the bees to move off the comb sections with smoke rather than a vacuum every bee off the comb sections you're trying to pull out. It's a bit of a messy job, but somebody's got to do it, right, folks? <laughs> well, as you can see, we're making some really good progress at this point. Uh, almost got all the honeycomb out on the left side of the brood nest, so moving right along. As you can see, I'm using the hive tool to get those bits of comb that are kind of hard to get to right up underneath the underside of that ledge. This one was uh, given to me by my good buddy uh, Yappy Bee Man. Check out his YouTube channel, folks. The same channel name, Yappy Bee Man. All right, so we've removed all the honeycomb from the left side of the beehive, and now it's time to tackle the honeycomb that's to the right of the brood nest. And then we'll tackle the brood nest. We'll go ahead and pull whatever comb we can out of there and frame some up to place in our nuke.
folks this is what we have left basically the brood nest a little bit of honey so uh, vacuumed up a good bed of bees I'm gonna set those up in just a little bit and then uh, I'll come back early in the morning and try to finish this and get the queen and join these up with the other bees so uh, that is it for now it's uh, the Sun is going down so there's like maybe 20 minutes left of dark I mean light so uh, I could probably push it and wear headlamp and all that stuff but uh and finish this but uh we won't get very good light for uh, filming and uh i live a couple of miles from here so I'll, I'll come back in the morning and uh it's been a long day this side right here had a good bit of comb you know honey and then uh so that side there is probably you know this whole thing was seven feet a little more than seven feet across i measured it the other day and uh, this area here has got to be three and a half feet and maybe two feet here. So I guess that's about right. Uh, and then we've got a couple of feet left, something like that. So uh, that's it for now. Get ready for port two or three, I forget which. <laughs> All right. All right, folks, I'm back. Let's see if we can get this done. Woke up to a lot of rain today, and uh, so I wanted to get an early start, but like I said the rain was pretty was pretty severe. We got bees covering comb. We're gonna see if we can use some of it. So let's get started.
perfect. Good brew to the top on this one. Some honey though. They got the carpenter bee. Hey buddy. Female too. Female coffin to be. Trying to avoid getting some of this mortar dust. Still a little bit on the uh, cones. That's why we're doing like that. to be in there. Oh well.
folks I think what we're gonna do now is we're gonna try to run the bees up see if we can get them to go into our nuke uh, I'm gonna use some honeybee going and just try to try to run them up so, let's see what we can do here March going, folks. Exactly what I wanted. See if we can spot Queenie. We got a good bit of bees.
believe that I vacuumed out probably, I don't know, seven pounds of bees yesterday, folks. You know, that's like 21,000 bees, all right? And we still have, you know, it, I'd say two and a half pounds of bees here, maybe somewhere in there. So we, even if it was like two pounds of bees, you know, you're looking at uh, uh, 27, 28,000 bees in this colony, so just shy of 30,000 bees. Got a few. Definitely got a few. Well, see if we can find a queen. Oh, I'm 
so glad we got her. I like these bees. And that's a bunch of them. And, uh, you know, you go through all that work, and uh, you really won't do want to get your queen. So I'm glad something can happen to them. I was getting concerned for a minute there, you know? Fantastic. All right. Let's go ahead and put her on there. Perfect. Okay. Let's get her in here. Okay, well that's gonna do it for this one folks. Hope y'all enjoyed it. Ah. Another one from JP the B man. I hope y'all having a fantastic day because I sure am now. Until the next one. Y'all take care. Get in that box. Get <laughs> Alright folks. We're going to go ahead and transfer the bees into a larger setup, give them more space. So we're going to give them a little smoke, just to keep them honest, these bees are very chill folks. So not only were these bees gentle folks, but they were pretty dang uh, productive as well. They had it going on in that brick wall, I'm not going to lie folks, you know. So another reason why we want to get these bees into a larger setup is it's very hot right now. It's going to only get warmer as summer progresses, so uh, they can definitely use the extra room. Their numbers are going to grow. They may not make a, a bunch of extra comb because uh, we'll get to the point where uh, you know, our next nectar flow wouldn't be till late September. That would be uh, from the golden rain trees. The uh, queen's on this frame right here. You can see the two rubber bands. And so I'm going to go ahead and uh, pull her off and put her aside, and then we'll go ahead and we'll release her at the entrance in just a minute. So I've been having a lot of people ask me about the queen catchers that I use, these stainless ones, because I call them hair clip queen catchers because they look like woman's hair clip, but uh, I get them from Date Ant out of Paris, Texas. I'm going to put that frame back. There's so many bees on there, and I want to grab those rubber bands and just pull them out. So I'm going to take my hive tool, use it like kind of like a knife, and just cut right through them, and that'll pop them. Then you can grab the rubber bands and pull them out. You can let the bees move them out. You know, beats going in there and uh, pulling the rubber bands out with that amount of bees on that frame. So this makes it a lot easier. You know, it's not the end of the world. If you leave the rubber bands in place, the bees will likely chew through them and push them out. But why not give them a helping hand when you can? All right, folks. Well, it's almost show time. We're about to release the queen in front of the entrance to the hive. He's a big one. I don't know if you're getting that or not. She's kind of at the bottom. She's in the middle now. And then that bigger, bigger one. She's nice and healthy. She's at the top. Alright, let's go ahead and release her. I'm going to let her go right here. We'll let her just run over, okay? Alright, I'm going to go ahead and just shake this. Great well, she's released, folks. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> well. That's how you do that. So, all right. Hope y'all enjoy this video. Another one from JP the B Man. I hope you're having a fantastic day out there, because you know I am. To the next one. Take care. Great day. Orientation time.